Now, UV unwrapping, in terms of kind of like doing materials for this, we're going to be using a free add-on. You just got to create your own material, but it does come with its own materials. I've got materials available on Patreon. Um, so if you want to download this model, it'll be available there with the textures. I'm going to come in. Let's go, let's press V to rip. No, you're not going to let me. That's fine. I can't rip an, a face just out because of, I don't know why, but I can rip individual lines. And so that's what we're going to kind of do. I'm just trying to think what's the best way. I want to kind of, yeah, cut it. I'm just trying to think what's going to be the best way. I think maybe if we did this and this, J, this and this, J. Then when we select our full loop, V to rip, perfect. I'm just going to scale this piece up inside. Then we can come in, select this section and this section. Control B, middle mouse up wheel one, control numpad minus, Alt S, Alt S. And then we've kind of put that cut in. And that's going to make uh, when we come in and use Dreamy V a lot easier. So we'll save that. Now we do have like a stupid amount of objects in here. Um, I want to cut this up as well. So let's go here. Let's go there and there. We'll do that and that. Control E, mark scene. Because it's going to be, it's going to have a very hard time UV unwrapping that. Now what Dream UV is, we'll talk about that now, is we start off with a plane that's specifically cut along the panel lines. And if we come into material mode, you can see that we've textured this piece with um, a certain way. If we have a look at the actual texture, if I go shading, will it let me? Yes, so this is what the actual texture looks like. Uh, bake 2, nope, not that one. If we have a look at the diffuse, Dream UV uh, base color, you can actually see that there's nothing on here. Whoops, let's go here. Do that again. Dream base color. It's actually a very, sh sorry, I recreated it. So the alpha is primary and then we can just change the color of the texture just by doing a um, mix shader. If we have a look at kind of like the normal, for instance, you can see how we have those indents. Thinking about it now, the normals should be facing the other way, but eh, future market problem. And then we've got the roughness as well. This is what the actual texture looks like underneath. So the way Dream UV works is we pick an object. So for instance here, um, I'm going to give it the black material. Okay. And we can see that it's not UV unwrapped. There is a texture applied to it, but it doesn't make any sense. Coming over into Dream UV, I've got a ton of add-ons. With my Atlas here selected as that other mesh, I can, I can just go hotspot. And now it's retextured this piece. So what it's done is if we have a look, we can see this is what this looks like. Come into UV editing and it's automatically unpacked it to fit within the cuts of that panel. So if we have a look at this panel over here, we can see how we've got these cuts up here. So if we focus just up here and then we have a look at our piece that we've just UV unwrapped, not you, you you can see how they've fit into that section. And so that's why when we're looking at this, you can see that we've got our markings along the edges and then our grungy parts coming off it. So this is one of the reasons why I love Dream UV. Nice and quick. So if you've gotten this far, can you just hit the subscribe button, trying to get that 100,000 mark and it would help tremendously. Um, let's go orange and we'll go hotspot. This one here. This can be maybe the metal Dream UV. And this is all the same texture, texture set. I've just changed it ever so slightly. I like that, I like that. That's looking great here. Whoops. You can be black, hotspot. Uh, the cylinder is gonna be a bit interesting. I think what we might do is select there and there. Control E, mark scene. So that Dream UV knows where to UV unwrap. So hotspot. And that can be metal as well. Awesome, look at that, delicious. Over here, this can be black. 
Hotspot. Um, you can be black as well. Hotspot. This on the side here can be metal. And let's go hotspot. Will it work? Cool. If it if he ever goes into edit mode once you've done a uh, Dream EV, it means that it can't calculate it into squares. So you might just have to go back in and do some work. So here, I mean, this one might. Let's go uh, metal hotspot. Yep, that worked fine. Here, this can be probably orange, orange hotspot. Perfect. Uh, not so perfect. Interesting. Interesting. Don't know why it's done that, but whatever floats your boat, mate. Let's go black hotspot. That's great. So where we put those UV seams. Let's go here. This can be orange hotspot. You are a metal hotspot and you are a orange as well hotspot oh all this stuff down here as well whoops let's go down here you can be black hotspot perfect you can be orange hotspot and as well you have to remember that we did two sets of colors just to give it a little bit of differentiation so i'm just going to grab this whoops i'm going to grab this first section and we'll throw maybe a metal a sign Awesome, that looks great. These here can be black. Hotspot, nice. This under here can be metal. Hotspot, oop, yep. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like that one. And then that bottom section there can be black. Done. And I mean, how quick did we texture that? Amazing, I love it. That's pretty cool. Now there is a bit of an ambient occlusion on most of these materials. So for instance, if we jump over into shading, uh, the metal doesn't have any ambient occlusion, but if we have a look at the black, or sorry, yeah, black does, you can see how it's got a bit of a orangey dirt color, and that's this color here. And then if we look at the orange, we've got a bit of a dark brown, but it's not very prevalent. But there we go. We've gone from start to finish making a cannon. Wait, we haven't rigged it. So we've got this rotation but we don't have the other rotation so what we need to do is i'm going to select this piece here uh, let's go there shift s selection to cursor i'm going to go ahead and add in a empty circle rotate x 90 so you can see our circle here control a apply scale apply rotation no can't do that because then it will just reset up what we need to do now is select our first empty that we did a while back, select our second empty, control P, parent object. So now when I select this bottom section, we click rotate, the gun turret works. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. The reason why that is happening is because we parented, we did the mirror to uh, the window. What we should probably do is target it to the empty, I reckon. And let's go Y. Uh, I'm just going to go hide and I'm going to do this for each individual one. Hide. And then once we've done this, we're just going to press Alt H and it's all going to come back and we're going to be happy. So Alt H, bring everything back. Now when we click rotation, you can see that it is now rotating. Awesome. We now need to select all these objects which are sitting on top of the turret. So this one you 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 is that everything you, these panels this piece these pieces i oh, can see we didn't uv unwrap some of them so that's fine let's now go ahead select this empty control p parent object and now when we click rotate we are rotating a whole turret and then rotate ugh, rotate why with that we can lock the rotations for instance so if i go lock the x axis so rotate x good i can't rotate that rotate the uh, lock the y axis but the z axis is fine which is what we want up here as well it's the exact same thing rotate y no rotate x x is what we want so let's go lock and lock rotate perfect then we can do things like um track two and so on and so forth but that's for another thing 
But uh, there we go. We made pretty nice looking cannon. And we should be able to now pick all this up and put it across various spaces. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, please let me know. Give me a like and subscribe. Helps me out trying to hit that 100,000 mark.